Hey, welcome to ADSR. I'm Stephen Ellistead. Uh, make sure you're following on social media and subscribe to the ADSR YouTube channel. My previous tutorial, I wanted to look at, at mastering and kind of start you off on the basic mastering workflows. Less as a how to use the tool specifically and more of this is the process that every mastering engineer needs to follow in some form or another to do the work. And in doing so, it's a really great way to develop your techniques and your ears and just kind of further your audio education. We started out with critical listening and fixing the problems to get it to a, a space where we could enhance it. And so at this point, we want to focus on enhancing and improve it. And we're going to look at the frequency response and tighten the low end and then add energy if we need to. Uh, dynamics, maybe exciters. We've already done some stuff with the exciter just to, to bring it to life. Um, and maybe some saturation. We also, as we do this, we still want to be double checking our stereo imaging to make sure we're not reintroducing kind of phase problems. So let's let's listen to what we have here. And for those of you that didn't catch the first video, um, this is what it sounds like with everything off. I think we've got a track at this point where we've got a nice baseline and now we can work on um, bringing out some detail in it between equalization uh, dynamics processing. First thing I want to look at is the frequency response. And so this is a frequency analyzer. Or if you don't have Insight, most DAWs have a frequency analyzer. And Blue Cat Audio actually makes a frequency analyzer that's totally free. So if your DAW doesn't have one, go ahead and pick that up. So anyway, this is just going to show us what's happening in the frequencies there. And so we can see the bass is a little more predominant, but it's not terribly bad because we did fix most of those issues that we had initially. And let's see if we can enhance that, bring in an equalizer. And I'm going to probably do this before the imager, but I might you can slide them around as you need to. So let's look at what I do with the dynamics first. This is a multi-band compressor and really, really useful for taming parts of your mix. And so let's listen to each of the bands first, starting with the low end because it's the most problematic. And so I just have a little gentle compression, just kind of kissing that threshold. I just don't want that to go over the top, so I've got the limiter on it as well. And so as we come on up into these, you really hear the details starting to come out. Each of these four general bands is going to provide something specific to the mix. You got your power and your punch and detail comes from the low mids, um, the clarity and presence from the high mids, and kind of that light airiness comes from up top. And while this is a compressor, by compressing certain ranges, we can bring out different things that are happening in that range um, so that we can either EQ them to improve them or just bring them out with the dynamics. So let me take these out of solo right now and let's just hear just the uh, the high mids where that, that kind of sizzle sound is. So I'm definitely compressing that a little more. I'm coming down to right around the edge. I want to tame that and then I'm boosting it just a little bit. If I bypass that part, we can definitely hear more detail in those guitar strums and hi-hat. Up here there's next to no information there's not a lot of detail in there especially in, in, without having done some boost to it in fact, we'll come in here and do that just a little bit of air on top of there and let's take that out of solo and hear everything together so we can definitely hear a difference there my gain started to creep up a little bit. And at this point, I just back one of these off. 
I'm not worried about that. When we get to the gain section, we'll deal with it. Yeah, we definitely got a lot more robust low end, we got more detail there. But let's shape this out a little bit with the EQ. Just sweeping around, listening for any problem areas. I don't really hear much going on there. I often find you want to dip a little bit between two and four hundred, usually towards the higher end of that, just to remove any kind of boxiness. In that low mids and we've got a gentle boost up around uh, 2 to 4k uh, if there's a vocalist in there you might actually come down here and instead do a boost something right around here 1.5 because that's where that human voice really sits predominantly in the mix but I think we'll be okay with this one so let's listen to, to that again after the dynamics processor whoops we're doing all right there uh, one thing I want to mention is this is a Baxendahl curve those are just a type of curves that have a much more gentle slope so they're commonly used in mastering all right and so as I'm working on this and I'm popping back and forth between all, all of these things I'm just constantly self-correcting and constantly checking the bypass and checking it in mono because as you make changes they cause other issues um, and it's mostly a matter of getting comfortable with that back and forth workflow and knowing what you're listening for uh, when you when you do this bypass. But when we get to this last section, the part of the reason for this balancing act is that we start pushing into a limiter to, to bring some loudness out of the track and prevent it from going out. And so depending on how hard we push our input, it's going to affect the, the signal that goes in to hit this threshold. So it's going to very much change the character of the track. And so at this point, when I bypass it, I'm going to bring this up out of the way. We got a nice low level. It's decent either way, but we're There's definitely a little more punch in the bypass version in the center, although we're wider on our version. But I tend to think that that extra detail in the low mids uh, is worth the trade-off, especially once we push into this limiter. So when we're going for gain, we're looking to get a good peak level max peak level and we're looking at our loudness as well and really so we're looking at the difference between the, the meter and the average meter um, and most DAWs are going to have some version of that because the average loudness is very different from the absolute peaks so we're going to come in here and we will come out of bypass with this on I'm going to bring my threshold down but depending on where I push into it it's going to change so if I trim this back we're not hitting that limiter at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and push into it like this. So we can hear just a couple things. I want to tighten that up. There's still something I like in that original that we don't have, and that's in the high mids. 
So we're going to bring this up a little bit and boost it. Nice gentle curve. Try to get some of that out of there. Maybe bring it up around here. Now I'm feeling pretty good with what we got going on here. So once I get that limiter on, um, and I have true peak limiting on to make sure that I don't have any uh, peaks that go past the ceiling of minus one. And now I'm just going to get up to a nice strong level. It's not actually, you know, clipping too much. I'm looking for, you know, this, this average level to be between like minus six and minus three. And peaks not really going much above that and being caught by the peak limiting. So I think we're, we're doing pretty good here. I'm still seeing a little bit of, of, of hot there from when I bypass it. Just double check it. So we're gonna try moving this after our dynamics, see how it does. So don't ever be afraid to swap the order of your plugins or your, your modules or what have you. Um, make adjustments as you go because this is how we, we figure out what's happening in the track and we make a compensation for it to improve it. I think we're finally there. Boost it up just a little bit, but let's give it a listen. I can live with that. So that's a, a real quick run through of the mastering workflow. Hope you learned something. Um, we got our gain balanced and that's all good to go now. Um, and um, if we got to burn a CD in memory export, we're going to go ahead and hit dither, turn that on, or apply a dither plugin into our DAW. Um, and make sure we're creating a full resolution master. Uh, last thing we also want to do, I actually did it a moment ago, is we want to just trim out the ends of our track. Um, to an appropriate length that's called tops and tails and if we need to add a fade as well we just come in here and add a basic fade to the end of the track and so I'll just come in and adjust that all right and so it was already faded out a bit there but it's nice to be nice to be sure as far as your uh, absolute masters go and boom there we go it's a really good idea to come through and check your work uh, a day or so later because your ears do kind of get get fatigued and the more you come back and recheck your work and make those adjustments you start to learn where your ear fatigue points are and kind of what things tend to change over time and which things you're pretty solid on hope you learned something and got a good better idea of the uh, ma basic mastering workflow Get out there and experiment, master your tracks, do what you can to keep on improving. All right, thanks a lot for checking this out. If you have questions, please comment on the video page and make sure you subscribe to the ADSR YouTube channel. Uh, thanks, I'm Steven Ellistead. Have a great day.